Hello everyone, it's me Hamdi, back with another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple main menu in Godot 4. The version of Godot that I'm going to be using is Godot 4.1.1. And let's begin. So here I have a project opened. It's called Simple Main Menu. And yeah, let's start creating the main menu. So in order to create a main menu, you will have to use the user interface node. Uh, this is also called the control node in Godot. So in the scene panel on the uh, top left, like around this top left region here, click on user interface and it takes us to a, a separate window and it takes us to a separate section. Uh, this is the 2D section of Godot. And yeah, I'm going to be call, naming this main menu. And then I'm going to save this scene by hitting Control S. I'm going to create a folder called scenes and save it as main menu. Note. Uh, you don't have to match the main main node's name uh, with the scene name. You can, you know, keep them at different names. But as long as you can understand them. So, yeah. Okay. So, now let's create the necessary elements in the main menu. We will need a background, some buttons, and yeah. Of course, before I continue, uh, I'll create a basic game scene. So, let's go into a time lapse. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a basic level. Uh, just assume that this is a level. Okay, so yeah. So now let's continue with our main menu. Okay, so in our main menu scene, now first let's create the background. So I'm going to right click and click on add child node. And I'm going to type here a color rect. You could also use a texture rect if you want to add a texture to the background or if you're gonna add different animations it's up to you but in this tutorial since we're making a simple main menu I'm gonna be using color rect and of course we can use these anchor presets on the top toolbar over here uh, like you had to click on this green circle with a sort of with two lines are intersecting perpendicularly and yeah click on that and then you can see a bunch of anchor presets and i'm going to use full rect and this scales the color rect to fit the entire uh, region over he over here and by the way if you did not know this blue colored line indicates the default camera in the world of course uh, in 2d there is a default default camera in godot so yeah keep that in mind so yeah this blue region in the 2d space represents the default camera so yeah and of course once we create a ui in a node it actually scales to the size of the camera and because of that, since we used full rect here, it actually scales this color rect to the size of the control node. So if you change the size of the control node, it actually changes, you know, like say, for example, if I did not, you know, have this to be full in size. So maybe if I just 
resize that to be small. And then if I click on full rect, you can see that it actually scales to fit only that, uh, only the control node. So yeah. Okay, let me just go back and use the anchor preset to make it full again. And yeah, of course. Now when we click on the main play button, it will ask no main scenes ever be defined, just select one. You can change it later in the project settings under the application category. Now normally if you have a main menu, you will have to select the main menu as the main scene, especially when you're building the game. And right now you can see that we can see our color rector. Sorry for the mess that happened there. So yeah, now as you can see, now we have... Oh, uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see, our color rect is visible. Okay. So now I'm just going to make that a dark color. Somewhat dark gray. When I run it again, it'll auto save. And yeah, voila. We have... Oh my god. Why is my Godot going down? Okay. Okay, there we go. So you can see the main menu. Okay. So, now that we have a background, let's make the buttons. So I'm going to right click on the parent node, click on add child node, and I'm going to, you know, instance a button. You could even use a texture button. Uh, yeah, you can use uh, a custom button if you know what you're doing. But since in, in this tutorial we're making a simple main menu, I'm going to be using button. And yeah, I'm going to be naming this as play button. And I'm going to put the text to be play. And you can see that it's a tiny button in the uh, in the top left corner of that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's actually anchored to the top left corner of the control node or the UI node. So yeah, let me go into the anchor presets and let me select the center. Okay, and then let me scale this up, yeah, you know, to a reasonable size. Oh, yeah. Uh, but before I do anything, I want to show you a handy trick that we can use to organize our buttons in the vertical order. So you can click on Add Child Node by, uh, once you select the parent. Yeah, so... Once you select the parent, you can click on Add Child Node, and then you can click on, or you can search for a VBox container. And this is actually a vertical box container. Uh, so I can say, I name this to main menu buttons. And as I add buttons into the this, you will notice something happen. Oh, the button actually moved there. So, now I'm going to anchor the VBox container to the middle. Okay, I'm going to give it a reasonable size. And you can see that the play button is placed at the top. Now, of course, it, sometimes there will be issues when we use the uh, HBox container. So the buttons would be, you know, somewhat... Okay. So now you can see that the play button is in the top it's arranged here and now look what happens if I duplicate this button you can see that uh, another button gets placed underneath so yeah it's actually handy so you don't have to uh, you know position buttons and don't worry you, uh, the buttons seem to be close together but I'll show you a way to separate this so yeah okay so I'm going to rename this button to the options button okay. and then we're going to, going to name this the options and finally I'm going to duplicate this button and I'm going to rename this to quit button okay and it's going to be quit okay now, of course, there is a 
small issue and that is as you can see the buttons don't actually fit the entire you know container and of course we can't scale them using the normal methods we can't use anything to scale these buttons because they're controlled by the vbox container so if you're happy with this it's okay but if you are not happy with how it looks and you want it to scale with the vbox container then you can click on a button and then in the uh, when you uh, go to the inspector and under the control portion over here uh, click uh, click on the layout drop down and then click on the container sizing drop down which is the last one under under that and then you can see horizontal vertical and then you can see something called expand once you check that it fails the vbox container but hey the other two buttons haven't resized that's because we will have to set it for them as well. So under the control portion, going to layout and going to the con container sizing and then click on, on expand. Same for the quit button, going under the control portion, clicking on, clicking on layout, clicking on container sizing, you know, leave the drop down and clicking on expand. And now you can see that all these buttons equally scale in the VBox container. Okay. Now, if you're happy with this, uh, fine. But if you want some sort of separation, then what you will have to do is click on the VBox container. I've named this to main menu buttons. So yeah, click on that. And then under the theme overrides, you can see constants. And then you can see something called separation. So click on that. And then you can increase that. And can you, if you, if uh, I do not know whether you can notice it, but can you see that there, uh, there is some, you know, uh, light gray space. So maybe if I, uh, you know, lighten this up, you can see. Yeah, you can see that now there is space between the buttons. So when I make this to zero, you can see that the space is less. Once I check this, uh, yeah, once I check this, and yeah, you can see that there is no space here. And then once I increase you can see that now we have some space. Right. And of course, if you're satisfied with this font size, it's fine. But if you want to change the font size of these buttons, you could either create a theme separately or you could go into each individual button, go into theme overrides, font sizes, and there you get a dedicated font size checkbox, which you can actually scale up. I'm going to scale this to 30 pixels. Uh, okay, and same in the options menu, going under the, uh, yeah, it's, it's under the control portion. So under the control portion, you go into theme overrides, font sizes, click on the checkbox, and type in uh, the size you like. And the same for the quit button. So under the control portion, we go into the theme overrides, and then under the font size, you click on that checkbox and then type in the size that you like. Okay, so now we have a main menu set up. Uh, let me just position this a bit to the bottom. Okay, and uh, yeah, just for a you know placeholder logo, I'm just going to use a rich text label. Yeah, uh, yeah, you could even use a you could use a texture rect or you could just uh, yeah you could use whatever you like. I'm just going to be using a rich text label, you know, just to, I, to just to you know show a hypothetical game logo. Theme overrides, font size, normal font, and I'm going to scale that to a hundred. Okay. 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 So now we have a game logo, a hypothetical one. And now let me just say hypothetical game logo. Okay. So now I'm going to position this a bit down. And okay, now we have a basic main menu set up. So once I hit play, you can see that now we have some buttons and we have a game logo, uh, a hypothetical one. But as you can see, even though we set up the main menu, we haven't actually added any functionality. 
So let's get to the fun part, adding functionality. So under the main menu buttons, you can you make sure you click on it and select it. You can either click on the attach script button over here, or you can right click and click on attach script. I'm going to be using GD script. So yeah, and I'm going to be choosing the location for the script uh, under a scripts folder for better organization. And I'm going to put me, I'm going to name this as main menu buttons dot GD. Oh, you can just name this whatever you like. Okay, create. Okay. So now our ready and process function are here, but we won't be needing them for the time being. Okay. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be using something called signals. And these are actually used to, you know, call built built-in functions in these nodes, uh, so that like when when that particular action happens, you know, you can call custom code. And of course, you know, these signals are actually, you know, functions that can be connected to scripts, so that you know you can access those functions and add custom code there. Uh, the custom code is to and the custom code is executed when that particular action happens. So let me click on the play button. And then right next to the inspector tab, you have a node tab. And right away, you can see a bunch of signals. And as I told you, they're function, built in functions for the particular node. So yeah. So under the base, uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is also a node. And of course, this has properties of a base button. And right away, you can see that there's a pressed function. So yeah, this is what is handy for us in the, for the time being. So in order to connect a signal to the script, we're going to double click on it. And right away, you can see that a menu pops up. And yeah, it says from signal. Okay, and connect to script. So now, uh, since I've since I've attached a script onto the main menu buttons vbox container, I'm going to be connecting it to that, uh, which is main menu buttons .gd. So yeah, if you have attached the script somewhere else, then yeah, you have to connect it to that. So yeah, you can see from where it's connecting from and the uh, thing that you have selected here. Now, since uh, nothing has a script, it is all highlighted in gray, because, uh, uh, like all in gray because yeah, they don't have script, but this one has a script. So yeah, it is highlighted automatically. And yeah, receive a method. You can actually name this to whatever you like, whatever you can understand and then click on connect. Okay. And yes, now that signal is connected to our code. And now right under this signal, like when we receive this signal, we execute some code. So now we're going to use some functions. So I'm going to define a variable called var scene load okay and I'm going to define its type as a packed scene okay now now this actually I'm going to export and export actually exposes this variable to the inspector so that we can add in you know our own value so we can edit it from the inspector later on okay so now once we yeah define that in our on play button pressed signal uh, signal, we're going to add this. Okay, so we're going to say get underscore tree, and this is going to get the main scene tree. I'll show you what the tree is. Okay. Dot change scene to packed. And now it asks a packed scene. So I'm going to put scene to load. Okay. So when we hit play, and uh, before I demonstrate this, let me show you the scene tree. So when I click, uh, yeah, in it, once you go into the Godot, you can see the scene area. There is local and remote. So local is, you know, the project here, and yeah, like whatever the properties that are in the default project and remote is your running instance. So yeah, whatever is happening in this uh, application over here. And right away you can see a root 
main menu and you can see a couple of things and notice that it actually looks like a scene tree. it looks like a tree so yeah so it gets this it gets this uh, it gets this entire tree so basically yeah okay now let's demonstrate this so i'm going to click on the instance and yeah let's click on play now we're getting some errors now the thing is this we haven't assigned a scene <laughs> yeah and you right away you can see that scene to load is empty okay so now under the scenes folder uh yeah i have named this game uh, hypothetical game level as level .tscn. so in the main menu uh, under the main menu buttons you you can right away see main menu buttons .td section we have scene to load and i'm going to drag this level .tscn. okay now let's run it again. Okay. And once we click on play, you can see that it actually loaded. One more time, once I run it, and then once I click on play, it loads our level. Hooray. Okay. Now let me uh, create a hypothetical options menu as well. So back into time lapse. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and created a you know hypothetical options menu, and when I click on the you know run current scene, actually it's a play button, but with a you know with the thing that they use to cut movies and start movies. So yeah, that thing. So you can click on that, and then it'll run the currency. So yeah, we have a hypothetical options menu. These things don't do anything, but Let's just assume that these are options that we can configure. So back into our main menu. We're now going to go back into our you know, main menu buttons.gd. And yeah, now let me go to the options button and now go to node. And then double click on press signal and then let me connect it to the main menu button script. Okay. Now for this, of course, we're going to be doing this a bit differently. Okay, now I'm not going to be loading this in a separate scene. Of course, you could do that if you like, but I'm not going to be doing that. Instead, I'm going to be instantiating that into the same scene. And of course, yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, I'm just going to instantiate that into the same scene. And yeah, before I do anything, let me just, you know, increase, let me just, uh, you know, make this some, uh, semi-transparent so that you know you'll be able to see the buttons underneath so yeah now let me go back to the menu scene okay so now let me add another export variable and i'm going to call this the options menu and i'm also going to make that a packed scene okay so now i'm going to define a variable within the signal var options menu instance equals options menu dot instantiate Dot instantiate. Okay. And yeah. So now this instance is going to be added to the scene tree. So I'm going to say uh, get underscore tree dot root. So root is it's going to get the root and dot get underscore node 
And of course, this node is actually going to be the name of the main scene. Yeah, so yeah, because we're accessing from the root. I showed you earlier where the root was. So it was the topmost part that you saw on the tree. So right below that, we need to access the main menu. We could also do that via groups, but since this is a simple main menu, yeah, I'm going to be using this method for now. Okay, dot add child, and I'm going to be adding the options menu instance. Okay, now uh, before that, rather than uh, before we commit the same mistake again, let's assign the options menu scene into the options menu slot there. And then let's run the project. And now let's click this. And then you can see that the options menu works. Well, of course, I did not add a back button there. So apologies. Okay. So yeah, I stop the scene. Okay. So now in the layer. So now how do we quit the game? Okay. So let's do that. So click on the quit button. And as uh, like before, we're going to go into the node tab. And then click uh, double click on the press signal and then connect it to the main menu buttons and of course this is actually a simple line of code so it's like get tree dot quit and you could also set a custom exit code but i'm just going to leave it like that for now when i click on play when i click on quit it quits so there you have it we have a basic main menu so when i you know click on options it goes to options and yeah when i click on play it goes to the main menu it goes to the level and yeah when i click on click quit it quits the game so that's it for today's video please like and subscribe and see you later